In this video I will show you how to export your photos from Lightroom. Hi, this is Fiona and in today's video I'm going to show you how to export your photos. I always use Lightroom to export my photos to social media to print and I do it with uh, something called batch export. So I export a lot of photos in uh, with a couple clicks in different sizes and different um, with different settings. I'm going to show you what those settings are and also I'm going to provide some presets for you. So if you are interested in finding those presets, which I will save after this video, you all you have to do is go to my website. Make sure if you if you're on a Polish version, make sure that you just click this little flag to change the to the language to English. Go to for, for photographers and go to edit editing resources and there you will find somewhere among those overlays that I have for sale you'll find those presets for Lightroom. All right so I've got my session I already uh, finished editing all of them and I'm ready to export and if you want to export your photos all you have to do is either if you uh, are in a library mode you have to go to export here or just go to file and click export and that takes you to this window which is export one file which actually doesn't which is actually not exporting one file at the moment and right now we're going to uh, talk about all those different um, boxes and and different settings and then i will show you and then i will save my presets for you so first thing is the export location well, of course, you have to find a place for that JPEG file on your disk. And you can go to a specific folder, which is great if I'm exporting just one file. Just I want just this one photo in a different uh, with a specific settings, like I'm exporting my photos for only my own purposes. And uh, then I choose a specific folder. If I'm creating a um, a preset I will use this choose for the for the light folder later because that might be a different location for every photo and then you can also choose the same folder as the original photo so it's, it's going to send you wherever your raw files are and this little arrow is great because I use it all the time and those are the last uh, my like many many of those um, locations where I which I chose for exporting in, in previously. Uh, you can click choose and find your um, export location on your disk. That will take you to Explorer or Finder. Then we've got this file naming, which of course you don't have to click this. You can just leave the name as it was originally. But I like to add a little um, custom text at the end of the file name, such as print or social media or something like my web just to know what type of a file that is I also add a date because that helps me then to find my photos on my in my life catalog because I have those catalog by dates and that that just makes it easier for me to find it so you ha I have my first my name I put my name for clients then I have the file um, file name, then I have the date, which is actually, um, right now it's uh, 19, so it was actually taken in 2019 uh, in 07, 07 means it was taken in June, uh, July, and then it was 23rd of July, and then printed, this is my printing version. Then we go to file settings, and I have it set to JPEG, then you can choose your uh, different different types of, uh, of files if you want to. And then you can click color space, which is uh, sRGB at the moment because I'm using a um, specific settings um, that are, uh, that are um, given to me by the lab that I use for printing. So they want JPEG files in sRGB and they want resolution to be 300. And this quality slider is set to 80 by default 
I recommend setting it to 100, especially from print. Then uh, we've got our output sharpening. If you ever seen my videos, in my editing videos, that you know that I export, I sharpen my photos when I um, edit, and I do that um, for printing. So I pay attention to the one-to-one -one preview, making sure that if you zoom it one-to-one, -one, there, there is no visible um, sharpening or no detail. Um, spoiled by a sharpening so i don't like output sharpening when i'm exporting for printing because i'm not sure how that is going to turn out, to turn out in a bigger print and then i don't use my watermark for printing if i if i have my settings for social media and those are very similar apart from the fact that the custom text is social media and then those are the same, but I resize my my photos to 2048 pixels, the longer edge, and also change the resolution to 72 dpi. Then I do sharpen for screen at the end. So because I sharpened that for printing and I was paying attention to one-to-one -one preview, I know that that image won't be uh, visible that large. So I can do some more sharpening because no one is going to see that little detail uh, in such a small photo. And when I'm exporting, when I'm uploading to my Instagram, I actually sharpen even more within Instagram. So there's uh, something called edit and then you can go to edit and then you can sharpen your image a little more, which works great because the Instagram photos are really tiny. And even that output sharpening is not making enough uh, for them for them to look very sharp. And then at the end, I use watermarking. I use my watermark for social media, but not for my social media. For my social media, if I put on my own social media, I don't use watermark uh, because actually I don't like how it looks on photos. I kind of think that it kind of destroys. Um, but I know that there are different opinions about that. I just don't like photo, uh, watermarks on my own photos. But I do put them if I give my photos to my clients. Because if they put them on their social media, they put them as themselves. And someone might see that photo, someone might like it. And uh, it, I would really like them to know who took it. So I'm not asking the people to um, tag me every time, although it would be nice. But if they forget about this, I always have my watermark on the photos that they are putting on the social media. So it's not for stealing your photos. I think a lot of people think that the watermark is just like someone is going to steal your photo. I think it's not the, not the case. If someone really wants to steal your photo, they are going to take it to Photoshop and just remove your watermark. It's not that difficult. Uh, it's more about the like, um, making sure that the cre credit goes back to you uh, if one of your clients is posting that on social media. So if you want to go and add your watermark, you just have to go to edit watermarks here on the bottom. And then you can use either text where you can just put your name with like some, I don't know, you put your business name there or use graphic. And I use graphic. And you have to go to image options and choose and then you're just looking for your um, PNG file which someone I don't know, designed for you or just you did it yourself. Just have to find that PNG or JPEG file on your desk. Um, and then you can put it you can put it anywhere you want like you put it in, in the middle of the photo or on the bottom bottom uh, in the middle or in a corner or however you want you can change that you can move it a little uh, on s both sides and you can change the size of it and then you can change the opacity so right I right now my opacity is low less than 50 percent I like it to be here down here and smaller and it can be a little lower Okay, this is this is how I like my watermark. You can set it as you want and then save it, save it and just because it's going to be placed in the same place with every photo that you export. 
So if you have sometimes have different photos and you want to place it in different spots, you have to save a couple different presets for that. And uh, but it's a lot of work, <laughs> and I really don't do it. I just put it every time in the same place, just like bottom, middle, and I think it works the best. Okay, and uh, so. And then uh, post processing, I just uh, open that in sh show in Finder. So I just it, oh, Finder uh, window pops out and shows me where the photo was exported. And then if I want to export my photos, I've got my session. It's already finished. I already finished editing. Then I click how many photos I want, like nineteen photos. I don't know seven, eight, or something. And you just click with, I'm just shift clicking and you can click with command or control A, it's going to choose all the photos at the same at once. I can choose a couple of them and then go file export again. And then I just click those little windows here and just put the first one, web, my web, print, social media and so on. And then go to batch export. You can choose a parent folder, which, which means that all the photos are going to be placed in one folder just all together like no matter if it's a print or social media uh, size is going to be just put in one location or you can choose a different location for different types of um for different types of your um images right now i've got export um youtube um folder already down there i can see that this is the print version so i'm going to choose the location for my print this is my print location i'm going to choose the location for my social media and this is the location for my my website okay and then uh, right now i only need to click export and it's going to export those 19 files in three different uh, with three different settings i'm going to quick click export and it's right now is exporting and shows there in the corner that three operations are in progress I'm going to show you how to import the, those export um, presets. <laughs> so once you find them on my website, just go to your export window and then click on like user presets, right click on the user presets and then use import. Just find those files on your desk and then those presets will be there for you to use. The only thing is that my the social media preset will refer to my own watermark preset, which is not going to be on your desk. So what you have to do is just go to your once you import those uh, presets, go there to social media, make sure that you change your watermark, go to edit watermark, edit your own watermark, watermark and then um, click add. At the, at, the, at the end and just put your own name uh, instead of mine save your own preset and you're good to go well I hope you uh, enjoyed that video and I hope that it was helpful uh, you can always check my website for new videos um, with uh, about my post-production process and also about my great uh, really really nice um, workshop, uh, video workshop, which I recorded for you all, all more than eight hours of watching. And of course, please subscribe to the channel and give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye.